and there are two words to describe the atmosphere, excited and energetic. For a baseball card that could reach more than $10 million, Baltimore's own Babe Ruth and a much forgotten memory of him with the hometown Orioles. Pizza is part of many college students' diets. It's definitely part of mine. Domino's knows that and that's why they say they're coming to the rescue for everyone, but especially for people with student loans. A Caps superfan, Tony, right here, Tony, can you tell me what exactly Nicholas Baxter means to you? Maryland may have lost on the road to the Hoosiers, but they're still undefeated at home this season. Head coach Kevin Willard and the boys will be looking to keep their streak alive. 15 straight home wins dating back to last season, including all 10 of their home conference games right here at Xfinity Center. I'm Carl McManus, and I'll tell you how one baseball card is helping Baltimore embrace its history. Whoever would have thought that the memories made here roughly 100 years ago would be immortalized here, in the home that Babe Ruth was born, a home that once came close to being demolished, but was saved and is now dedicated to honoring him right in the heart of Baltimore. It's always exciting to go there, especially today, when uh, obviously a lot of media and publicity is covering this event. For Babe Ruth, baseball cards, but not just any cards of the Bambino. We're very lucky we are displaying two of the 10 known 1914 Baltimore News Babe Ruth rookie cards. One of them is up for auction right now at Robert Edward Auctions, where we're expecting it to sell for upwards of $10 million or more. The Baltimore News, a local paper until 1934, released some cards with the blue background and others, like the star attraction, red. But what exactly makes this a multi-million dollar card? It's Babe Ruth, 19 years old, a rookie, first time ever playing professional baseball. So that's really what's driving the interest in this card. Babe Ruth stuff is reliable. Uh, Babe Ruth stuff is rare. And so it, for a lot of people, they see this as an investment. I think this is going to be one of the, the most significant sports auctions we've ever seen. Being a student athlete is super difficult. Yeah! Hours upon hours, obviously, you're a student too. Trinity Thomas, like student athletes coming after her, just wants to be heard. And now, Congress is listening. The kids start getting paid. And all hell breaks loose. I mean, is that, is that what is going on here? College sports are a 15 to $16 billion a year industry. Student athletes just want to cash in on the earnings generated by their name, image, and likeness. But a lack of universal guidelines has led to somewhat of a free-for-all. NCAA President Charlie Baker echoed Thomas's sentiments. There should be one set of rules for all athletes across all sports and all schools. Currently, 31 states have laws on NIL, but there's no uniformity, and that's where the questions start. Should student athletes be regarded as university employees? It would subject scholarships to taxation. It would subject student athletes to all sorts of wage and hour regulations. It would mean if suddenly you have a receiver who drops a bunch of passes, you can be fired and lose your scholarship. Should lawmakers determine what NIL looks like? You may regret asking Congress to intervene here. Um, all of a sudden, you're going to be micromanaged. What is emergency pizza? Pizza when you just really need one, you're just craving a pizza? It's like fast, I guess, yeah. Domino's new emergency pizzas program has them giving away pies for free and targeting people with student loans who now, after a three-year pause, have to start paying them back. I don't know how much pizza is going to help if they're crushing debt, student debt, but I don't know. Maybe make them feel better for a day. And it's not just for people with student loans, but also if you burn your dinner or spend two hours in traffic and don't feel like cooking or just get mixed up in anything that can ruin your day. Get an emergency pizza? Sounds good to me. Domino's reward members just need to place an order for a medium two-topping pizza and they'll receive a coupon code in their account within 24 hours. But what toppings? It'd be a Hawaiian, Hawaiian pizza, ham and pineapple. Mushrooms and spinach. Like, if you don't put pineapple on pizza, I feel like you're not living. You, you haven't experienced life. Carl McManus, CNS TV News.
The Orioles have known for a week that they would be hosting a playoff game Saturday at Camden Yards, but now they know who they'll face and when. It won't be 9 o'clock on a Saturday when the regular crowd shuffles in, but the Texas Rangers and Baltimore Orioles will start their series Saturday at 1 p.m. This is to accommodate a Billy Joel concert taking place right next door at M&T Bank Stadium later on in the day. Now, Baltimore fans won't have to choose between reality and madness. However, it may be madness in Columbus, Ohio this weekend. Coming off last week's win over Indiana, the undefeated Maryland Terrapins will travel to take on the fourth-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes on Saturday. While this is the Terps' biggest matchup of the season so far, head coach Mike Loxley has said it all along. Maryland's approach is to focus on what it does best, and his players seem to have bought in. We're treating this game like every other game we have this year. Really, it's another opportunity to go out there and show what kind of team we are. There's no anxiety or anything like that. It's like we're not going to change anything that we're doing just because we're playing the Blue Bloods of you know college football. You know, we believe we can compete with anyone that's that's on our schedule, anyone that's on the field, and uh, every week, every day, we got to prove that. Maryland has yet to beat the Buckeyes, losing in all eight games they've played so far, including a 43 to 30 home loss last November. The Navy football team lost last week's game by a similar score, 44-30, to, to South Florida. But now they have a chance to right the ship on Saturday against North Texas. Avery Newport is live in Annapolis to preview this weekend's contest. Avery? Thanks, Avery. Meanwhile, the Commanders are looking to bounce back from a tough overtime loss Sunday to the Eagles. Tonight, they're hosting a primetime matchup against the Chicago Bears. Fans funneling out of FedEx Field after the game won't be racing against the clock to catch the Metro. Earlier this week, the team and the Metro announced they'll be extending service hours to help fans get home safe after the game. For your Sunday football fix, the Baltimore Ravens are on the road to face their biggest rival. The Ravens, with their 3-1 record, will try to hold on to the top spot in the AFC North as they take on the 2-2 Pittsburgh Steelers. The bitter rivals split the series last season, with each road team coming away with a win. So, Olivia, Michael, how does a Baltimore Birds and Billy Joel doubleheader sound to you? Sunday's 38-31 loss to the Eagles was the Commanders' second consecutive defeat and the fifth in their past six contests. The Commanders will hope to reverse their fortune when they travel to take on the New England Patriots this Sunday, but they'll do so without some key contributors. Before today's deadline, the Commanders made not one but two mega moves, trading defensive ends Montez Sweat to the Chicago Bears and Chase Young to the San Francisco 49ers for a second and third round pick respectively. Commander's minority owner, Magic Johnson, will have less of a financial burden for the remainder of the season. Not like he really needed the relief. The former NBA player joined a limited club of athletes over the weekend. According to Forbes, the 64-year-old became just the fourth athlete to have a worth of over $1 billion, joining Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James. Most of Johnson's wealth was earned as the majority owner of the Equitrust Insurance Company. From the gridiron to the hardwood, where the Wizards can't find much momentum early in the NBA season. They lost at home to the Celtics last night, 126 to 107, continuing to alternate wins and losses in their first three games. But when the Wizards take the floor at Capital One Arena next on November 10th, there will be a new look. The NBA unveiled the court designs each team will use during the new in-season tournament, the NBA Cup, and the Wizards' design is something to behold. The gray court with the teal streak down the middle will complement the team's new City Edition uniforms, which are expected to be announced within the next week. The Wizards' home court will get a break as they embark on a four-game road trip. Meanwhile, Capital One Arena's other occupant is enjoying their longest homestand of the season. The Capitals extended their winning streak to three games on Sunday, defeating the San Jose Sharks 3-1 thanks to three unanswered goals they scored in the third period. And first-year head coach Spencer Carberry already knows to take some time to live in the moment. I mean, it's not easy to win in this league, as everybody knows. So when you string three wins together, however they look, um, shootouts, comebacks, whatever it is, um, we're gaining some momentum in our season, yeah. and now we have a few days to, um, to regroup here and, and um, get ready for another tough stretch.